In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us put ourselves in the presence of the Lord. Lord, graciously give us your Holy Spirit. Guide us from within, give us your light, your discernment. Draw us to you, incline our will toward yours. And we ask you this through the powerful intercession of Our Lady who is always present among us. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed are thou among women and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and in the hour of our death. Amen. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Good evening, um, everybody. Thank you for uh, being here. And good evening, or afternoon, or morning to all, uh, to all the persons who are watching us uh, on uh, YouTube. Um, we continue our journey, which um, now it's it's lesson 25, and uh, we are supposed to start chapter 12, just to remind you that uh, the uh, dark night of the sense has uh, only 14 chapters, and we are about to start uh, chapter 12 uh, right now. Um, just a little reminder, if you don't mind. Um, in chapter 12 and chapter 13, St. John of the Cross will address what you can see here on the title of chapter 12, because 13 continues on the same vein, um, of the benefits of this first night of purification. So once the person is um, purified, uh, which means not leaning anymore with the old man on the uh, perceptions of uh, the milk that was given, the consolations that were given, now this is stopped. And then the person is drawn with hopefully the act of uh, faith, uh, hope and love toward a new functioning, a functioning of the new man. Uh, in this sense, uh, the lower house, if you want, is arid. There, there is, we, we don't have, the person doesn't have any more the same uh, consolation it has, um, a, a, the person used to, to have. And this change is generating uh, a lot of benefits. Remember that this night is completed by the following night. There is a deep connection between both of them. It's the same person. We start with the sense, but the roots will continue uh, to be addressed uh, later on in the following uh, night. <clears throat> and we will see how. So why I'm saying this, I'm saying this because the benefits that we will uh, see, uh, study, uh, hear about, uh, will be um, also uh, the result of the other night, but in a more radical way, in a more radical way. So it is important and interesting to pay attention to these benefits and then also uh, see later on what will happen uh, in the next um, uh, night, next purification. Um, remember also how he started this book. Um, he started by, by uh, making a, his case, a uh, case that the person, the human being at the junction, which is the, the beginner, uh, the long period of the beginners 
I say long while. It can be one year, two years. Of course, it can last for years and years if we don't do anything. So this first phase, he, try, he started by showing certain defects. And remember, you remember very well, he went through the seven uh, deadly sins and uh, he um, transposed the, uh, these sins uh, into uh, spiritual sins or better said, imperfections. And he showed us that the human being at this junction had all these imperfections, which is amazing because it's like he's looking under a magnifying glass at the human being, which is really very useful for all of us, for all people who uh, are on their way to uh, answering uh, Jesus' call. Now, what is interesting here is that when now he will study the benefits, which means okay, the night is done, it's, it's, it has, is realized, uh, the Lord purified, moved and switched, switched off the lower uh, house and then um, opened the way for a different functioning. Um, he shows us now the benefits and you will see that maybe not immediately, but further, further on in this chapter and the following one, you will see a sort of uh, a mirroring between uh, the problem we had in the beginning, the imperfections we had in the beginning, and now the results, how God operated. And it's very interesting because we can see that it's God himself who operates this change, who operates this transformation. Uh, the human being cannot achieve that. So uh, bear in mind all this uh, when you start chapter 12 and chapter, and, and you start to read chapter 12 and, cha and study uh, chapter 12 and chapter 13, okay? So without further ado, let us uh, then start uh, these uh, two chapters. Uh, this is lesson, by the way, uh, 25. So here we are, chapter 13, on the benefits which this night causes in the soul. This night and purgation, you see, always synonymous, of the desire, a happy one for the soul, this, uh, this, this night is, is, a, is a happy one. Why? Works in it so many blessings and benefits. So many blessings and benefits. In a way, in a way, one should desire this purification. You see, a beginner in spiritual life, as he was described in the beginning of this book, The Seven Imperfections, Whoever finds in himself or in herself these imperfections, it's good to desire that change and be strong and bear with uh, God's work and not insist and be stubborn on wanting the consolations, etc., etc. You see, the doctrine is very different from a very um, spread um, idea that consolations are uh, to be understood in a different way. So be careful here. I already mentioned that tons of times, but it's good to, to, to know that. So it brings benefits. So it's good to desire it also and, and be strong uh, and ask for the strength to bear with this uh, change and this absence of, of consolations and also the new activation of the uh, virtues. So this night and purgation of the desire, a happy one uh, for the soul, works in it so many blessings and benefits. Although to the soul, as we have said, it rather seems that blessings are being taken away from it. You see, the first reaction, as we saw, uh, if God takes away all the consolations, the person doesn't know, uh, doesn't have all these explanations that John of the Cross uh, presents. So the first impression, the first reaction is, oh, I'm lost everything. I am lost. I don't know what to do. You see, you see, um, the person doesn't appreciate that. So I think it's very important to sort of switch in the mind uh, the understanding. What is happening to me is good. It's like when you are supposed to receive an injection. If you don't like injections, well, you need to sort of uh, prepare yourself mentally and say, this is good for me, even though it's painful, it's good for me. I need that, you see? Uh, I don't know, like when you have to prepare for, for an exam, 
you have to study hours and hours and hours. So you sit down, it's very painful, it's very um, uh, tiring, uh, etc. But you know that this is to help me in order to go through uh, the coming exam. So I, I'm taking just simple uh, examples, you see. So the perception is the blessings are taken away. That's the paradox. That's the paradox. So you see here also the spiritual director uh, needs to have he, his or her open uh, her eyes very open because the person will say I'm lost while in fact the person is, is improving. So you only listen to the person with one ear, not both ears, because if you listen with both ears, you uh, sink uh, and drown with the person. If the person says, I'm lost, and, and you hear, oh, yeah, she, uh, this, uh, she, he or she is lost. No, they're not lost. On the contrary, they are progressing. Uh, how do you understand? So you need to ask, you need to, dis to understand what is happening. You need to ask maybe one or two questions to make sure certain things are still functioning uh, properly. Then maybe that's a sign of progress. You see, a sign of progress. So here is the paradox. Hmm? Uh, what it appears is not really what, what, it, what it is. Uh, it's not what it, what it appears, okay? So, although the, uh, to the soul, as we have said, it rather seems that blessings are taken uh, away from it. That even as Abraham made a great feast when he weaned uh, his son, uh, son uh, Isaac. Uh, so let me read the, the uh, uh, sentence properly. Uh, this night works in it, in the soul, so many blessings and benefits that, so forget about what is inside the parenthesis, parenthesis that even as Abraham made uh, 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 even as Abraham made a great feast when he weaned his son, uh, his son Isaac. Yeah, you you made normally you make normally a big uh, feast to uh, celebrate the uh, weaning of 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 the son. That's it's it's in some uh, civilizations uh, that was um, um, a tradition, if you want. Even so, another example. There is, uh, there is the, their joy in heaven. There is joy in heaven because God is now taking this soul from its swaddling clothes, setting it down from his arms, making it to walk upon its feet. And likewise, taking from it the milk of the breast and the soft and sweet food proper to children and making it to eat bread with crust, which is difficult to eat for um, a, a, a toddler uh, and to begin to enjoy mm, gustar to 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 taste mm, to uh, savor mm, the food uh, manjar is, is more than food manjar is a delicious food a very sweet uh, or very an excellent uh, food of robust persons beautiful it's a bit long sentence, but it's very beautiful. Let us go back because there are many pearls. I mean, with some John of the Cross, the difference between John of the Cross and other uh, authors, not all of them, but may, the majority, is that with John of the Cross, almost each line has, has a pearl. So it's good. It's in, it's, um, you're benefiting from it. It's not boring, I hope. <laughs> At least for me, it's not boring. I don't know for you. So you find always new indications, some light, reflections of the light, a different angle, you see. Uh, and I, I think it's, it's very rich. It's constantly rich and, and um, dense. So let us go back to this. Uh, heaven is in joy. So this is where we should put our joy in what God wants in the right direction. Heaven is in joy. Why? Because God is taking this soul, this person, from uh, away, this baby, uh, not feeding the baby anymore uh, with the milk, but putting the baby on his or her feet and inviting the, the, the person to the little person to start to walk by himself or by herself. You see, not only that, but to start to eat uh, more solid food. You see, so God is pushing a little bit. Uh, the person is changing. It's very important here to remember, it's God who makes this change, not us. Hmm? Very important. 
the, 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 the knights in St. John of the Cross, this Knight of Sense and the other knight, the Knight of the Spirit, uh, are knights, uh, are God's initiative. So you see, Christianity is not only about our initiative by the grace of God, the general grace of God. Christianity is also about an intervention, a direct personal intervention of God in different ways and different phases or turning points in our spiritual growth, spiritual journey and growth. You see? So that's very important. Christianity doesn't end with just maybe the call in the beginning or some consolation and that's it. God will then intervene in a direct and personal way and change something. So hopefully we are aware of that or hopefully the persons who are helping us are aware of this and understand the change that it's God, it's, a, it's given by God, it's realized by God and not just coming from an error or a lack for, of the person. So you see, this is where we should put our, uh, our joy and, and why? Because God is now starting to give a different food but uh, to the spirit, the real food. Hmm? Look what he says now here. <clears throat> this food in this aridity. So the apparent absence of consolation, paradoxically, is the beginning of a more real food. You see, if, if the person says what? I lost everything. No, I don't have what I used to have before. That's the reaction, okay? St. John of the Cross says that in the same time, when the person seems to have lost everything, paradoxically, God starts in the deepest part of the human being to communicate himself in a stronger way, new way, different way, stronger way, more substantial way. That's the paradox. And the person has a completely different impression or perception of what is happening. You see? So see here, it's not just he's depriving us from something. He is depriving on the on the lower the lower house, but he's feeding the upper house. That's very important here. This is why look at the, how the sentence is written here. This food. He's not saying this absence of food. No, he says, yes, absence of consolation is a new food. This food in these aridities and this darkness of sense is now given to the spirit. You see which is dry and emptied of all the sweetness, hmm, uh, the juices, and in Spanish here it's jugos, jugos is, is uh, juices of sense. So no juices on the lower house and the spirit now starts to uh, receive something new. But is it perceived that by the sense? Answer is no, it's contra it would be contradictory. It's not perceived by the sense, you see. And this food is the infused contemplation whereof we have spoken. The translation is correct from the Spanish. The Spanish says exactly the same. La contemplación infusa que habemos dicho. The infused contemplation. That's, that's we are following uh, really what uh, he says. Okay, so here is the paradox. I thought that the constellations were contemplation. Now, if you ask a beginner, what is contemplation? The person will, will sort of use his or her experience of the constellations and will say, well, this is contemplation. John of the Cross says, no, that was the milk given to the sense. Now the real contemplation is starting. So the paradox is here. The sense cannot perceive contemplation. So when you define contemplation, you need to be very careful. <laughs> Are you seeing something? What is what in you, which faculty in you or which area or which house in you is perceiving? If you say that it's the house of the sense, <laughs> that's not contemplation. Here is the paradox. One of the, 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 one of the central um, elements of our Christian life, which is contemplation, uh, needs to constantly to be clarified. You see, needs to be clarified. So we need to be careful. What is contemplation? Uh, not according to what we think. So if you ask the person here who says, uh, uh, let me go back here. You see, I'm underlining here this, no? Um, 
uh, it rather seems that the blessings are being taken away from it. So this is a perception. So if you ask the person, what is contemplation? The person will say, no, I'm lost here. There is no contemplation. I used to have contemplation and now I don't have contemplation. That's the uh, Joe public uh, reaction. You need to be careful here. That's very important for the church. Yeah? We need to find the explanation of contemplation, not as we imagine it. Because if we rely on the definition of contemplation or the projection we make of contemplation on whatever experience we have, it is very dangerous. It is very dangerous because we will be projecting our own experience as the soul is saying here, as I'm underlining it. Yeah? It rather seems that blessings are, taken, um, are being taken away from it. So the person will say, well, I don't have contemplation. I lost everything. You see, it's like I'm... I'm, 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 I'm I am, uh, I'm, yeah, I'm lost. You know, I don't know where to go. Hmm? So what is the definition of contemplation? The, this person cannot give it because this person, because of the fact that all of us, you and me and everybody, we judge things very often from our own experience. So if you ask somebody, a beginner who has uh, for some years, had uh, certain experiences and consolation, what is contemplation? Uh, the, the, he or she will give the answer from his or, or she, uh, her is, uh, him, his or her experience, you know, because it's a projection. So an adjustment here, a very important adjustment needs to be made. And of course, if, you, if a beginner opens the book, uh, opens a book on, on spiritual life and finds the definition of contemplation as St. John of the Cross gives it, he, he will be extremely frustrated because the answer is there's nothing, nothing to feed the sense. You see, it's like nothing, there is nothing to be seen. Or if he, 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 he or she goes to, and speaks to a spiritual director or, or a spiritual uh, teacher for form formator and says, okay, what is contemplation? The normal answer is there's nothing to be seen. God is giving it, but there is nothing to be seen. It's like, okay, well then why do we call it contemplation? Because contemplation means to see something. No, contemplate means to see. Contemplatio means to gaze, spiritual gaze, you see? Of course, it's shocking. But that's the reality, you see? So, sorry if I'm sort of trying to contextualize, as they say, you know, to put things in, in, in perspective. And, and because that's the church, no? This, 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 these writings are for whom? Are for us, or for, for, for people who are watching, no? Uh, people who are in need to, to progress, okay? So you see, it's not, it's not the beginner who can determine progress. Beginner cannot define progress. It's impossible. It's by definition impossible. Why? Because he or she has the problem of projection. You project from your experience because that's the only thing you know. And since it is strong, it speaks to your senses. Well, it's, it's tangible. It's like if I say the opposite to you, you will, uh, you will reject me. You will send me away. You will say, no, you are not a good person. You, 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 or oh, John of the Cross, that's not a good book because that's not saying what I'm having. I know what I'm having. You see, that, that's the answer of the person, no? I know what I'm having. I know what I'm experiencing. This is God, you see? So you enter in a, as he mentioned in the beginning of, of the chapter, of the book, he's, he, talks, he talks about spiritual pride. The person knows because the person is relying on the experience coming from the sense, being sure because the sense are, are, are it's something tangible. No, mm -hmm. if you if you sense something in your sense, uh, that's 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 tangible. So you judge from out of it, okay? Um, from uh, using it, you judge things, okay? Sorry for this uh, parenthesis, but uh, I think it uh, helps us understand uh, uh, understand the difficulty but understand also the challenge and purity of doctrine. Uh, what can you say? What can I say else than that? Okay. If you have any questions, please, you can always just grab the mic and interrupt, interrupt me because we are here to help each other. We are here to, to progress. So if you find that uh, you, you, there is a question or an observation, um, and please, please uh, just interrupt me. Okay. Now, 
paragraph two. This food is infused contemplation. So you see, it's it's in the same time. He he deprives and starts. It's not after. He deprives and starts because it's a shift. No, it's like a like a switch uh, from away from a certain form of communication to a more real form. Paragraph two. This is the first and principal benefit. Uh, the word principle, uh, John, yes? Um, could I just sort of ask you to clarify something? Yes, please. Um, he deprives and you benefit. I understand the benefit bit in that it is God who is infusing contemplation. You've got nothing to, um, uh, you don't enter into this. It's, it's all done in, from his spirit to our spirit. But this, this, this sorry, is, sorry, providing, sorry, providing we don't oppose it. Yes, we have, we have seen that in the previous lessons. Yes. Uh, we need to adapt our behavior and not to insist on staying where we where we are. We the certain flexibility uh, is needed to adapt our behavior and not to want to go back to where we are. Sorry. Yes, go ahead. Yes, thank you for for that reminder. Um, now. Um, you said this food in these aridities. Now it's the aridities um, that I I'm wondering about because um, sometimes one feels, as you say, one is um, uh, what do you could say, banging your head against a brick wall. There's absolutely nothing there. Mm -hmm. And you feel you're getting nowhere, as you say, you're lost. Mm -hmm. But at other times, you are. There's a tremendous sense of peace and a tremendous sense of being in the grip or the grasp of the Lord. Mm -hmm. Is this uh, going backwards again towards the sense, or are we in the infused contemplation state? Uh, I'm inclined to say that this is uh, moving forward. You will be very su uh, happily surprised to see uh, that he will use the same expression that you just used, which is such a, a peace, certain peace. Uh, um, he says, and remember, he said, in the beginning, there is this kind of frustration because the new communication of God is not known to the person, but progressively, step by step, the person starts to sort of uh, lean or cling to this new uh, piece. And remember the image I used, uh, I think it was the last time, or, or of Elijah, no? Uh, yes. he, he's, he's waiting for the earthquake and the fire and the noise, etc., etc. But suddenly it's just a gentle breeze. It's not nothing, the gentle breeze, but it's too small. Uh, so not comparable. So uh, if it is comparable to like here, like to this, this example, no, uh, if you can compare to that, well, that, yeah, then yeah, yes, I am inclined to think that it's, it is the case because it's not a total absence. Of anything, it is the absence from the previous uh, consolations that the person might have had. Now, I would like to underline also something that not everybody receives contemplation in the same proportion. Of we don't have, we don't receive contemplation in the same proportion. Some people have very little cons contem um, consolation, not contemplation. We don't receive consolations in the same proportion. You have persons who might receive a lot of consolations in the phase right after conversion. And you, have, you might have people who have less or even less and less of, of that. So the shift doesn't have the same impact on the person. If you were swimming in consolations before with, with of course, on and off, on and off, because it's not on, always on, otherwise it's, it's wrong, there's something wrong there. It cannot be, be like that. But because of the weakness of the person, sometimes the consolation are stronger. It depends on the history of the person, depends on the sins, the sins and weaknesses. Uh, 
God adjusts consolation for uh, out of his wisdom to the need of the person, taking into consideration the, the, the weakness, the, the sins, the, the, the problems, the difficulties of, of the person. But uh, the absence of or having very little consolations is neither good or bad. It's just God is adapting his behavior with the person because we don't want too many consolations. He, he would do it only if it's needed. But if it's not needed, if the person can cope for, for many reasons or how does the, the person in, interiorly is built, how the education was, uh, how the person can cope with certain hardships, etc. well, to center eyes of the child Jesus from day one, there's, there's hardly any consolation. You can read the first letters she writes in the novitiate she says, there's nothing. It's, I, don't, I don't have consolation. She says, Jesus is sleeping. And this is a 15, 16 years old girl talking. And this will not change after. It, it will become worse. So until, of course, there is a period after in the beginning of 1893, that's, that's a different, this is after union, that's, that's a different thing. But but from the first day she, she enters, I think it's 88, if I'm not wrong. And then you, you continue many years until the end of 92, 1892. There's hardly anything. Uh, even it's worse. It becomes worse and worse because then he, she has, the, and of course, this is my opinion and I don't oppose it on anybody, but I think that there is a deeper purification at this level on different layers. First, her father, then herself. She describes that in her letters. It's not based on uh, uh, pure uh, speculation or imagination. Okay. So just to clarify that, uh, I forgot your question now, but uh, you, you, you see what I'm saying. Uh, uh, the, the degree of consolations varies from a person to the other. And it is, uh, I think that rather the, the Lord would rather go for the minimalist option. Minimum is just to keep the person walking, walking forward. You see, uh, he won't just spoil the person for no reason. If the person needs it, yes. I, I knew a, a person who had a conversion and he, he was saying to me, um, he used to say to me, God is just like dragging me. I'm so weak that he has to drag me. You know, drag me. I'm, I'm so weak. I can't move. I can't function that he is dragging me. Well, that's an extreme case, um, but it can exist. Uh, but Therese, nothing. No consolation. Uh, very strong. Uh, nature, nature-wise, uh, very strong. We shouldn't compare ourselves with each other. That's, that is not good. Uh, we just need to accept what it is. So to come back to your question, yes, um, I would be inclined to say that it's rather uh, uh, correct. Uh, we, you, that, you. Uh, that the, if this is the case of a person, then the person is rather going in a good direction. Um, yeah. Okay. Thank you, sir. You are most welcome. Now let us uh, continue. So. Again, if, if others have questions, don't 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 uh, hesitate. Um, as you see, it's it's useful. It, it has a certain difficulty. I'm sure you can see that into describing something, an experience uh, that is not really palpable or immediately palpable, and, and it can vary. So it's it, there is a certain difficulty to describe it, and there is a margin of of error, of course, possible. Number two, this is the first and principal benefit caused by this arid dark night of contemplation. Now, before mentioning it, I want to stop at the word principle, first and principle. Right. Principle in, the, uh, in philosophy and theology, uh, the philosophy and the theology that St. John of the Cross is, is using means the essential part the part principle is big and what comes after is, is much smaller so we need to when when the word principle 
uh, you come across the word principle with John of the Cross, remember, it means it covers almost uh, everything. Principality, it's, it's, it's the biggest part, okay? The, the lion's part, we would say. So when he says principle benefit, means the main benefit, uh, um, the main benefit, the most important benefit that, that really takes under its umbrella all the other benefits. This is the first and principal benefit caused by this arid dark night of contemplation. The knowledge of oneself and of one's misery. This is a benefit. This is a fruit. So let me uh, word it in a different way. How can we determine progress in spiritual life? Is it by the way of feeling and sensing the, con this, the co consolations and the things in, in the sense and in the emotions? Or paradoxically, the person starts now suddenly to have a new knowledge of oneself and of one's misery. Uh, bearing, bearing in mind that the person, when the person has this knowledge, the person has a perception, the impression of going backward. So I'm not progressing, I'm regressing because I find myself horrible. More and more. There's a progression here. It's not one shot or switching on off. No, it's growing. So you see here, you cannot, in the first course of initiation into spiritual life, bombard people by this knowledge. People will be scared and will not come back. Why? Because you are saying, uh, this is where we are heading. You see, we are heading toward a greater knowledge of oneself and one's misery. People will say, I'm already miserable. I'm come to your course. And now you will make me more miserable. Thank you very much. I'm going. Bye bye. I won't come back. I don't need spiritual life. I don't need the mystics. I'm very happy as I am. I'm a good parishioner and everything is fine with me. No more misery, you see? So you understand that the language that we use needs to in spiritual life needs to be adapted to where the person is. If the person is a beginner, you cannot bombard the beginner with, with these uh, ugly bits even though this is the truth, and even though this is a sign of progress. If a person comes to me in spiritual direction and says to me, Jean, I think I'm, I'm, I'm going backward. I say, why? Because I, I think I'm, I'm, I'm not capable of doing things. I'm, 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 I have the impression that I'm regressing and going backward. Uh, I'm horrible. I feel that anything I do is, is, is bad, etc." Of course, the person now is in hell, no, or, or a little bit uh, deep purgatory, let us say. So, uh, if you follow the person, you'll say, "Okay, oh, this person is going backward. Or what's happening?" And uh, you panic, no. While if you don't know what is spiritual life, what is progress in spiritual life? A progress in spiritual life, paradoxically, is the increase in the knowledge of oneself. And remember, remember, he will explain it. It's beautiful. These two chapters are beautiful. Uh, because he will show the change. He will show the change. He will, he will remind us of what he said in the beginning of the book, which is what? Spirit, uh, uh, um, the, um, spiritual pride. Spiritual pride is horrendous. It's disgusting. But if you are not aware of it, you are in it. You dream. You, 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 you think you are. No? But... The opposite of spiritual pride is what? Is this new knowledge infused by God. New knowledge of oneself on one's misery. And you will see uh, there are plenty of things to, 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 men to underline in the coming uh, sentences. You see? That's new. That's the result. It's a fruit of God's action. It's not the result of my sins. Although I, I might, I, we are all sinners. It's not the result of uh, something that I didn't do. On the contrary, I am a fervent, let us say, I am a fervent person. I am doing all what I can do. And look what is happening to me. I have the impression I'm going backward. So I'm lost. Imagine the pain in the person. 
Imagine the, 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 the distress, how distress can, can be the person. And this is only the, the night of sense. <laughs> Imagine the night of spirit, how it will be. So let us just stay here with the night of sense. So that's, that's a result of the action of God. You cannot generate that knowledge of oneself by yourself. You can read a hundred books about the knowledge of yourself and the misery of human and of human being. You won't reach that, that result. You won't achieve that result. You see, it's the result of a new intervention of God. Remember what he said above, this food is in the infused contemplation. Okay, so God's change is shifting, shifting behavior. I'm trying to adapt. And paradoxically, instead of finding myself happy and progressing and strong, I find myself weak, horrible, sinner, even more than before. Anything I do, even the smallest thing is, is like, nothing is working, etc. I'm miserable. But I am progressing, in fact, you see, this is why we need this man, this teaching of, of John of the Cross, this is a God given uh, information that we, we didn't have before. Hmm? Okay. Now, if you have any question, anything you can interrupt. Uh, uh, it's, uh, you know, you know, hmm? so Principal benefit. Why? Because this will, in, in, will generate will in generate humility. This generates true humility. What is true humility? Is it an effort that I made on myself? I am pushing myself to be humble. I am uh, accepting others to to treat me badly, as as the rule of uh, Saint Benedict says, or Saint Bernard's uh, description of humility. I, I don't remember now. Hmm? the different the sta steps of, of humility. This is a new humility infused by God because he's showing me directly who I am. This is not human-made humility. Although we have an effort, we had an effort, we have an effort, we have an effort of adaptation, but fundamentally now, this is God's made humility. Because he's showing me, it's like there is no intermediate between the human being and the truth, his own truth. And this is God who, who does that, okay? Yes, please go ahead. Yeah, no, you already sort of answered that question. Is the other side of that coin of, you know, this increase of humility, is that in order so that we lean and trust more on God instead of on ourselves? Of course, yeah, 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 of course, absolutely, absolutely. Because, that's the only I mean, the goal, because that's the only that's the only uh, exit uh, door exactly of, of course and it is meant to be that all all uh, let me let me reword uh, your uh, your uh, your um, question um, can you can you say it again please the, where I was going is why is this no why does God do this why does he sort of break us down or why does he want to do this or why is this necessary and you said you know because we we have to get rid of our spiritual pride we have to become more humble so the other side of that coin of humility or the direct consequences then that we have to start trusting more and more on him and not on ourselves yeah yeah because absolutely. in the end he 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 knows better Humility is truth. Humility is truth. The truth of who God is and who I am. We think we are for a long, for, for some time. It can be years, can be months, it can be rather years. We think we, we, think we, we, we know we are, etc. But then when this new the infused contemplation starts to work, <coughs> it sorts of what is, what is the main work of this contemplation? That's a good question to ask, which is a little bit your question, or why? So what is the aim of this contemplation? I'll say it in a, in a sort of a, a summarized way. God is removing from us all that is not him. So what is left? Nothing almost. Why? Because he wants us to lean on him, on his grace. 
the whole journey, the whole journey of spiritual life, the journey of transformation is a learning curve where we learn to lean on God more than to leaning on ourselves. The, our tendency from our own education is to merit things, no? I mentioned earlier on the exam, no? Well, we have exams, which means you have to merit your success. Uh, we have to, you have to merit the money that you are earning. You have to merit uh, sometimes even love, uh, the love of your parents or the love of this. You know, it's not good, it's not healthy, but we, we, we do it sometimes. So we function on paying either energy or time or effort or love or, or money or sweat. No, As the Bible says you will work and you will earn your, your, your money, your food from the sweat. Uh, from, uh, I don't know how they, they say it. Uh, do you know, I remember um, Francesca, how is it said in English, in proper English? Because um, a la, in French we say, a la sueur de ton front, no? Sweat of your brow. Say again? The sweat, the sweat of your brow. Brow, thank you. The sweat of, yeah. So, thank you. So, but in the end, what is spiritual life? Spiritual life is eternity already starting, which means facing God and entering deeper and deeper in God himself and being transformed because this is what allows us to enter in, in God, to be transformed in him, into him. God, his nature is utterly different from our functioning. His nature is, is free. When he gives something, he, he doesn't want you to pay. He's just free. So one of our defects is to want to lean on ourselves or on, our, on something. He wants us to lean on him. It is still an effort, by the way, but it's leaning on him. And whenever we depart from this sort of uh, thread, we are walking on a on a on a cable, no, like they do in the um, in the uh, circus, no. Uh, you, we are walking on a cable, the cable of his grace. To the right we fall, to the left we fall. So if we lean too much on ourselves, we fall. This is why our understanding of sin will develop. What is sin then in these uh, advanced, uh, it's not too, adv too advanced, but you know, it's spiritual if you want, in these stages. What is sin then well, from where it comes? It comes from the fact that at a certain moment, I started to lean on myself, in my thinking, in my judgment, uh, and so forth. So I am departing from his grace. So the entire pedagogy of God, the entire teaching that God is imparting and giving to me personally, directly, this is spiritual life. It's a direct relationship. We are wrestling with God himself, nothing less than God himself. The entire purpose of this education is to teach us to lean on him and not on ourselves. So he then is removing all the impurities and the impurities are created things we lean on or upon. So we are left with nothing else than him. So if I look at myself, as John of the Cross says, I see my own misery, uh, incapacity, radical incapacity, nothingness, you see. This is if I look at myself, but I can only bear to look at myself and find this vision, horrible vision, if it is supported by this new entrant in God and discovering dimensions in God that are utterly mind blowing, which is his, the depth and depth of the bowels of his love and mercy. You see, they, they go together. So the discovery, of God and the discovery of myself, they, will, they grow together, but I'm always losing more and more. I'm gaining him, but I'm losing more and more of any possessions that I had before. Possessions inside, not possessions like uh, goods, 
possessions inside spiritual possessions you see we will see that further on in the in the uh, uh, night of the spirit not the, 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 the purification the deeper purification you see so why god is doing that because god is freeing me from myself and he is my only good we function also in life uh, with idols we worship idols and uh, in the sense that we do not consider ourselves at his image and likeness we in our, in the way we act and what do i mean by that god is our good god is my everything is my love he is capable of feeling everything my emotions my thoughts my my will my imagination my spirit but usually we have our life we have i don't know our jobs our families whatever are, are our projects and these become our idols they replace in a way the place that god wants to take uh, in us saint john of the cross will remind us and you will see it soon uh, when we will start uh, ascent of mount camel book two he says the heart of the human being is the dwelling place of god this is why this this is why this place has to be empty empty from what he doesn't he's not asking us to become monks and nuns he says empty from the attachment so i can very much very well possess things but i'm not attached to them you see that's the difference it's not easy he needs to realize that detachment not us so the the person is learning to find in god everything because usually we don't find we don't want to we don't think that we are supposed to find god um, in god everything we search for human love human affection uh, our parents our children our um, um, husband or wife or or, or, or any other love uh, etc you understand what i'm trying to say so there is here also a constant turning uh, or curve that god is constantly taking which is or trying to show us that he is our treasure because we are his treasure we are created at his image not at the image of my father, my mother, my children, my husband, my wife, or my friend, my dear friend. You see, no, we are created at his image. So he is a reality. God is real, he's more real than you and me. So that's the learning pr process that God realizes. So he takes away everything because he is supposed to be my everything, but maybe not yet. So it's felt it is experienced with a certain difficulties like why is god doing this well why is god doing this because he needs to give himself and in order to give himself he needs to remove all that is not him and this is painful by definition it's painful because we we have attachments emotions uh, we have bearings uh, we need to live no and breathe no you see so he removes all that so this is why he's doing it okay this is the saint john of the cross i'm not i'm not uh, i'm not giving my opinion uh, here i'm just trying to bring together all his teaching and uh, present it in a spontaneous uh, way you will find all what i said uh, here and there in all all his teaching okay thank you but well that raises a whole bunch of other questions go ahead go ahead no go ahead go no, ahead because then practically if you know you're attached to him hopefully you still have to be in life attached in a sense you know you are you still have children or parents or friends or a husband or a wife or so i guess as god grows in you your love grows in you and hopefully you love them then better but differently absolutely so in a more detached way absolutely. so that they don't suffer because of your more attachment to god in a way you know um yeah i would i would say it in a in a in a in a sort of drastic way we lose them on the human side we gain them on the divine side 
it doesn't mean that how, we does become, that how does that work in we, we, we don't we don't we don't the more we grow we are supposed to be more possessed by god god is possessing us god directs us in the way we should love and when we should love and in which degree he is the one who ma makes us give ourselves or not give ourselves there is a moment where we should love and show affection even physically uh, uh, you know you have uh, children you have your mother you have your dad you have your husband of course but he in a way it's according to the purity of god god is not rough god is not harsh but god teach, teaches us the right measure you see he wants us to love in truth so i don't know if a friend of mine uh, at a certain point is doing something that is not right of course i will suffer because of it if i'm a, a very beginner i would i would almost uh, underline that and and bombard him or her with uh, nice uh, quotes from here and there and nice advice uh, the more i grow the more i see what is wrong but maybe god teaches me to be patient you know he is patient isn't he patient with us why can't i imitate him yeah uh, uh, when god decided to to make of, of some of us not all of us but some of us uh, father and mother this is uh, this is this is totally utterly crazy because this is divine this is he wants us to learn how he acts with us it's like he wants me to treat my child the way he wants me to learn how he acts with me this is divine only god can be father or mother you see because otherwise we will suffer our 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 otherwise we can act and we do <laughs> make big errors and we do we do god knows that we do it's normal it's 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 not uh, you don't want it but it it does happen you see so i'm trying to say that it is possible uh, i i can only i have seen that in certain communities uh in certain persons, uh, certain nuns, for instance. Um, so I'm answering your question. Does this nun in her community, she's a human being. She's like you and me in the beginning, no? But now we are, we are contemplating her in, a, in a, level of, a certain level of perfection. Is she capable of giving love and affection? Absolutely, yes but it's at the right moment the right way the right doses she might she will probably be acting the best in her community but in the same time she doesn't belong to you her sisters might try to find her affection etc she will give her affection but she will give equally her affection to other sisters because she doesn't belong to this sister. She belongs to Jesus and Jesus distributes her the way he wants. So can you blame her? No. Is she not loving you? She does, but she, lo she loves you the way you are supposed to be loved. Not just, oh, I want you. I want to cuddle you. I want to be with you. Uh, I want to be your friend, etc. Uh, no, in general. I see what you're saying. You see, so when you look at her, you 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 see almost that she's she's in looking inwardly. She's she's inhabited by the mystery of Jesus, by the presence of Jesus. You see that she totally belongs to him, and paradoxically, belonging to him doesn't deprive you from her but you know that she's sacred that she's pure that she belongs to god so she will respond she will be there of course better than others but purer than others you see that that's that's the the the, the thing here the distance so saint Teresa of, of the child jesus herself says the following she says because the, your question is very is very 
it's just, it's needed. Uh, it, it, some clarification is needed. No, the old fashioned way was, uh, you know, especially if you become a, a, a nun or, or a monk, you need to sort of keep your, your family at bay, a distance because the tides, the blood tides are very powerful and then they can sort of um, disturb you or, or put, uh, to remove the peace that you need in order to have spiritual life. So that's the old fashioned way, which is a little bit reading the gospel in a radical way. Who doesn't prefer me over his father, his mother, his son, his daughter, and her is not worthy of me. So forget about it. So that was the, the way of doing it till very recently, till almost Council Vatican II. And maybe some continue to do it. I don't know. That's possible. Of course, of course, because it's a reading of the gospel. It's a way of reading the gospel. Now, St. Therese of the Child Jesus says the following. She says, I am surprised to hear that which is I what, what I just explained. She said, because I feel that the more I love God, the more I, I grow, she didn't say I grow, but you understand what I, what, what I mean? The more I love my family. She says, I don't understand people, which means monks and nuns, mm -hmm. who distanciate, distanciate themselves from their family because of Jesus. She said, I, I, can't, I, can't, I can't fathom that. I can't understand that. On the contrary, what I feel is that I'm loving them even more. Why? Because it's Jesus in me who is increasing the capacity and power of love. So I'm loving even more. But she doesn't explain more, which this is why I gave the other example. There is a purity in the behavior. And even when you see the process of canon beatification and canonization, how that some of the nuns described her, it's a little bit like as I described the nun uh, a bit earlier on, which is she's totally taken by God. She belongs to God, but paradoxically, she will give you the best smile you ever dreamt of. She will be there to help you. She will anticipate some help. Remember, uh, she tells uh, many examples of charity and love. I'm answering your question. Hmm? She uh, knew that one of the old nuns they, they couldn't see uh, clearly, but she hated flowers because it, it would bring um, uh, allergy. So one day they brought uh, flowers in the place where this nun was, was ill in her room, no, in her cell. But Therese immediately said, be careful, sister, these are not real flowers. So she anticipated the, the, uh, the, um, the row, the, 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 the emotional uh, uh, row and movement of the nun saying, oh, please, I don't like flowers. You, you know very well that I can't bear them. No, she anticipates. She said, oh, you, you know, these are artificial flowers. You see, for maybe for you, it's nothing. But it shows the, 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 uh, the delicate Delicacy, love. Yeah. The, de the quality of love is superior, but pure. Uh, she gave her affection. You, you read her... Um, um, when she's in her bed a uh, few months before she dies, she shows such love for her sister, her sisters who are real blood sisters, no? who are where in the monastery. Uh, she, uses she used even words from uh, the time of their youth. So don't imagine perfection in a certain way, in a, in a sort of a uh, fussy, constricted way, no. She said, uh, she used words that were familiar to the family. Not in a, you wouldn't use them in a monastery normally, no? She did. And she's a saint, she's a great saint. So I'm just trying to show you that the development of love, paradoxically, is supposed to make us more loving. But loving, and the paradox is here, being taken by him, belonging to him, uh, I know there is a phase where, yes, people can be a little bit jealous, where they find that uh, the person in spiritual life belongs more to somebody else. It's like there is a competition. Um, uh, I can't, co of course, I can't compete with Jesus, but it's, it's an unfair competition, but they feel that uh, the person doesn't belong to them anymore. <clears throat> yes and no. There is better and there is worse. There is a side that is a little bit worse, but there is a side that is absolutely more delicious, I would say. Okay, thank you. Sorry for the long uh, reply, but I think uh, your question is, is, uh, is crucial uh, to sort of adjust a little bit 
uh, St. John of the Cross, and you remember in the beginning of the course, I, I quoted him receiving his brother in the, in his, in the monastery. Mm -hmm. It was a big feast. It was his brother. Normally, brother is like, oh, go away. I don't want you in the monastery because uh, we, want, we don't want to, to, to mix family with, with, with the, the brothers, no? No, he received him as the best treasure he could have. He looked not detached. He might be judged by his brother as not being detached. But no, uh, remember Therese, I'm surprised. The more I love Jesus, the more I love my family. And she showed it. Uh, others also did the same. Uh, Elizabeth of the Trinity, uh, Saint Elizabeth of the Trinity, another Carmelite. I, I can give quotes from other non-Carmelites uh, world. I mean, don't, don't get me wrong. It's, it applies to all, everybody. So, um, she wrote beautiful letters to her sister, to her cousin, to her mother. Uh, it's um, no, but it makes sense in the sense that if you grow in, in in knowledge of God and you grow in love, that you would then love better, obviously. Um, so it makes sense. Yeah. All right. Thank uh, you. I'm afraid. I'm afraid we we the the, the hour uh, is there and uh, we have to stop. But uh, don't ever think that uh, it was my choice to answer your your question and Francesco's ones and and uh, it, it, because they are um, they are practical questions and this is what we need. We don't want a, a doctrine from Saint John of the Cross that has no feet. Uh, and you, your questions show that uh, it's it's a very practical thing. I think also I try always to show that it's it's about people, real people, not just uh, imaginary um, uh, reality. So um, we will continue <laughs> next time this uh, paragraph two. So let us thank God for again and again and again for this amazing. Uh, uh, doctrine that St. John of the Gross, Cross is uh, conveying to us. It's a huge blessing for all the church and let us pray for uh, all the persons who need it so they can find um, his teaching and understand it properly and uh, grow. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Thank you very much.